Welcome to Conversations in a Vintage Shop, a podcast from behind my counter between customers. Join me while I sit behind my retail counter and just have a conversation with you or with myself. While I look out the window, observe what I see, things that are happening in the store today throughout the week, and just fun little stories that I have from my time as a business owner. This is something that you find interesting and keep listening. And I appreciate you. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode one. That sounds so pretentious and official, but I'm saying it. So what this is, is this is just a podcast about daily goings on in my shop, stories, weird customer interactions, pretty much anything that if you've ever been into my shop and we have very good conversations for, that's exactly what this podcast is going to be. So if you are new here, you have no idea who I am or what my shop is, I will give a brief rundown. So my name is Courtney and I own Carmine and Hayworth Vintage in downtown Fargo, North Dakota. And we are a vintage shop that specializes in all things different and weird. We're not just a shop, but we are a community and experience. And here, it's a safe space. All are welcome. Whether you're weird, you're boring, you're basic, I really don't care. If you got a good heart, a creative mind, you're welcome here. Anytime, except for when I'm closed. I don't want to be here after hours. So, having said that... We're just here to shoot the shit. I don't really care about what we talk about. And part of the beauty of it is I just like to talk. I like to talk about different things and different things that happen in the store and being a business owner. So in this inaugural episode, what I kind of want to talk a little bit about is kind of a new happening that has happened in my life within the past couple of weeks. And it kind of goes into just regular life in general, but then also shop talk, I suppose. So last Monday, which I'm recording this on the 13th of October, I was diagnosed with ADHD. And for those of you who have heard of it, know someone with it, I'm... 32 years old. I am from a generation where there is a whole lot of stigma behind ADHD. Growing up, the only people I knew who had it were the boys in my class. And I always thought they're just really hyper wild. And you always thought there was something that set them apart. And again, just a whole lot of stigma and even with the medications involved in it. So imagine my surprise when my therapist told me that Yes, Courtney, indeed, you do have ADHD, and that's probably why you're having the feelings that you've been have feeling the past year or so. So a little bit how ADHD has manifested in my life and in my business life. Anybody who knows me knows I pride myself in making lists, doing things, connecting the dots. I'm a doer. I constantly have to be busy. I don't believe in idle hands. And within the past six months is when I noticed a really big shift in that. I was having a hard time getting projects done. Even simple tasks in the store like dusting, emailing people, getting back to vendors. Little things like that were becoming almost impossible for me to do. It was almost as if I had a mental block where even now, sometimes I can't coherently give a thought. I lose really easy words. I was an English major and I was top in my speech class in college. And I found myself in the past year really being at a loss for what to say. I can't grab words in my head. I can picture it, but I can't vocalize it. So it's a whole, a whole mosh of things. So that leads me to yesterday, which was the 12th of October when I started Adderall for the first time. And my experience with Adderall was really just word of mouth. 
I used to work in the salon industry and I knew a lot of stylists that would use it to get through the day, get through projects, get through clients. I never really had talked to anybody who had used it for their actual ADHD. So some of the hesitation I had taking it was A, I didn't know how I would react to it. Is it going to make me bounce off the wall? I've heard people compare it to speed or having eight cups of coffee. And I've never taken medication like that. I take normal antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication, but this is a whole other level for me. So yesterday, i taken my first dose of Adderall, the lowest that you can, at nine o'clock in the morning. And it was the first day I would have to say in a very long time, at least a year, where I came into the shop and I had a list and I got through every single thing on that list within the first couple of hours. And I had energy to burn. I wasn't bouncing off the walls. I wasn't talking a mile a minute. Maybe I was. I did have a lot of customers in yesterday and I talked about a lot of random things. So that remains to be seen. But... I found that as a business owner, I could actually function. And in my head, I'm thinking, have things really been this easy for people? Going into work, having a list, and doing all the things in a timely manner, and not sitting behind the counter wondering, oh, should I do this? Should I not? I don't know. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm overwhelmed. Too many things happening. And when I've told some of my customers and friends about my diagnosis, the general consensus is that people are really surprised. And I think a lot of that has to do with the stigma and the shame behind it and how no one wants to talk about it, especially if you're someone who owns a business. Because I will admit, I'll be completely honest, I always thought people with ADHD were lazy. I mean, that's always what I had been told. It was always something that had that shame attached to it, that there was something wrong with you. But kind of what my therapist told me is, you know, your brain just works differently. There's not anything bad to it. It's just you work differently. And of course, nobody's brain is the same. That's why we're all different, unique individuals. And so when she told me that, that really dropped my defenses in terms of accepting That yes, I do have ADHD. And no, it's not shameful. No, it's not bad. I just have to find different ways of processing it and different ways of helping my brain sort all this information that I have. And I'm a very creative person. I love things. I love doing things. I love creating things. And ADHD, if left untreated was making it so I was a zombie. I would force myself to do projects only for the appearance to look like I was okay and that things were normal. When in reality, I was grasping at straws. I would plan a photo shoot and it'd be great. And during the shoot, I would appear like I had everything together, but then I would go home and feel like the biggest failure. And think there are so many other things I could have done, missed opportunities. And then you just sit and you think and you get lost in this hole. So really what I wanted to use this first episode for was to really kind of dive into my experiences with ADHD as a small business owner. And especially in such a unique space, such as a vintage shop. I'm not corporate retail, I'm not mass retail, trendy retail. I am just a little old humble vintage shop in Fargo, North Dakota. And I was really afraid to ask for help because I thought this was normal. I thought getting through the day with a massive list piling up and not having the heart or the motivation to do it was something that was normal, but it's not. And there's no shame in asking for help. No shame at all. Because what I've learned today is I can function like a normal, well, relative. Normal is a relative term. But what I deem to be a normal 
business day where I can actually do things that are good for my business and good for the customers that come in. And that's why I wanted to see what you, how you guys feel about it. Do any of you have ADHD? What has it been like in your field of work, in your life? And especially if you're a woman. And the fact is, women are much less likely to be diagnosed with it than men. And it's been true for a long time and it's changing. That is changing. But it's also more prevalent in women. And why is that? We were always told to kind of suppress all of our feelings and all of our energy into this little box. Did it grow from that? Is it from being so repressed? Is that a fear of looking hysterical or crazy? What is it? Or is it that we just, we feel things? I mean, as women, we're traditionally supposed to be the thoughtful ones, the thinkers, the lovers, the doers. And you get kind of trapped in that box where you feel like you have to process it. And we all have to process it the same. And maybe it's just our brain's way of revolting against that. I don't know. It's something I've been thinking a lot about the past week. And that gap time between when I was diagnosed and I could get on medication, I felt almost as if it was a turning point where I was on that ledge. And I was going to jump off of it. And hopefully this medication was going to help and things were just going to start making sense. Or I was going to fall into that pit and nothing would get fixed and I'd be right back where I started. But I'm happy to say things have been different. I feel different. I think there's more levity in the shop now because I'm not holding this in and holding all of these thoughts. And anybody who comes into the shop, I want to know, what are your experiences with it? I really do want to know because this is something that we should be talking more about. And within the past few years, mental health really has been brought to the forefront and it's not as shameful to talk about. It should never have been shameful to talk about, and no one should ever feel that way. Whatever you're going through, whatever mental illness you're going through, anything, we should be able to talk about it, because I really do think talking about it can heal. It hurts at first. It's that fear of judgment, and I know I personally feel like if I show anybody that kind of vulnerability, it'll make me look like I'm not as strong as I I want to come across. And you hear people say that sometimes the strongest people are the ones who can be open and admit their faults or admit when they're hurting or when they're feeling too many things. And I'm definitely one of those people who's trying to learn. And being in such a public space, it's really hard. You feel like you have to wear many faces. You feel like you have to always be on and almost like you're performing for people who come in. If someone comes in and they're having a bad day and they want to talk, I have to put on that face of, I'm okay, because I need to be okay so I can help you. But we can both be not okay together. It's not a crime. And this episode, I know is a little of a different tempo. It's, I mean for it to be uplifting. I don't want it to be doom and gloom. But I thought in this inaugural episode, I just wanted to kind of tell you more just about how I've been feeling and how this podcast came to be. And I owe it all to my realization and diagnosis with ADHD. And now that I'm on medication, I finally can do the things I've wanted to do for so long, but just physically and mentally could not bring myself to do. So this is a marker for me. I'm getting my life together. I'm getting things together. No more pretending. No more acting. No more telling everybody I'm okay. I'm working on it. And I want to look back on this and see that this was a time where I really could take ownership of things that are happening in my life and the path for my shop and... My business is not just a business. It's not here for you to just come and spend money and leave. It is an experience and it's almost a culture. 
I want people to come in here and connect and meet people like them. Artistic people, free thinkers, lovers, doers, anybody who needs guidance. I want this to be the Mecca for those who just want to come in and be seen and heard. I know a lot of shops say that, but it's not just an appearance thing. I don't just want you to go buy things for me, take pretty pictures, and that's all our culture is. I want you to leave here saying, wow, I had a really good experience. I had a good conversation. I met really great people. And yeah, I bought some pretty cool things along the way. But I want you to have good memories attached to this environment. And I'm hoping by coming out like this, I can just encourage you guys to do the same. So an ending. I just want to say that it is an honor to know all of you. And that you're even listening and you've made it this far about 15 minutes in. (laughs) And I just want you all to know that you have a space here. And you have someone that can talk you through it. And even if I can't physically see you right now, I know you're there. And just keep spreading this. Be that person that you're that beacon of light and hope. And if this little girl with ADHD like myself can do it and can create a business that thrives and can inspire others, then anybody can do it, no matter what industry you're in. So thank you. Thank you for listening to this first episode. Short, yet to the point, I suppose. But in future episodes, let me know what you want to hear. I do love myself a good customer story. We have a lot of weird happenings here, whether it be people that come in off the street, ghost stories. Yes, my space is haunted. And just random things throughout my life in retail and what I see walking in through my doors. Vintage shops are unique in that way. We're almost just a little colony unto itself of weird and random things that happen all the time. I think it's inherent being such a niche demographic. We certainly do attract all kinds. (laughs) So thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate you listening. And I'm hoping to do this weekly, or just whenever I feel like it, I don't know. I'm trying to do a schedule. I'll get there eventually. Thank you so much, you guys. I adore you, and I hope you have a good week. Bye.